God's kind of perfect, unconditional love for us. The unconditional, undeserved, perfect love of God for us. Love is first a choice, which then creates a feeling. At the time when I first heard this statement, I didn't think it was correct. The love that I knew at that time was very emotional and very conditional. It was always a conditional, deserved kind of love for other people. I love you if, if you do what I want you to do for me first. I love people who act loving towards me, and I hate people who act hateful towards me. In my mind, love was never guaranteed, and it always had to be earned. I couldn't understand the idea that anyone would choose to love unconditionally. My perspective was born mostly from what I saw in my own home. I watched my parents, who said they loved each other, fight, argue, hurt each other, and in the end divorce over irreconcilable differences. For me, unconditional love was not the correct way to choose to love. In much of my early Christian life, I carried a weight into it, stemming from the lies that I allowed myself to believe in about God's kind of love for me. After I became Christian, lies in my mind which said to me, no one would love me unless I was perfect. Lies in my mind which said to me, love always walked away in the end. Lies in my mind which said to me, God only loved me if I obeyed him first. Lies in my mind which said to me, God only loves me, sometimes not always. Lies in my mind which said to me, God could choose to stop loving me. Our spiritual enemy Satan tries to teach us to believe in his lies about God's kind of perfect, unconditional love for us from birth. And if we don't start to seek God to teach us his truth about his kind of perfect, unconditional love for us, then we will never start to experience it emotionally ourselves or try to obey him, to receive his power to love other people that way also, like he wants us to choose to do. Some scriptures which teach about God's kind of perfect, unconditional love for us, to choose to believe in, are God is love. 1 John 4 verse 8 God is love for us is perfect and removes our fears from us believing in it. 1 John 4 verse 18 When we were still sinners, God chose to love us. Romans 5 verse 8 For God so loved sinners that he lovingly gave his most loved possession his son Jesus' life, for the forgiveness of their sins towards him. John 3 verse 16 God acts loving towards his undeserving evil enemies. Matthew 5 verse 45 God's kind of love is unconditional. We often use the word love the same way we would use the word like to describe an emotion, an affinity towards something that we feel temporary physical pleasure while experiencing. Biblically, love is a commitment choice. It is an unbreakable covenant choice. In 1 Corinthians 13, perhaps the greatest passage ever written on love. Paul tells us that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and never fails. God's kind of love for us 
is unconditional, undeserved, unrelenting, constant in power, and unchanging. Growing up in church, I've known John 3 verse 16 and Jesus loves me for as long as I can remember. But as a young Christian, I struggled deeply with the idea that God really loved me. The only love that I knew about growing up with other people had to be earned, and that I believed that I was a bad sinner who did not deserve to be loved by a holy God. In part, after becoming a Christian, I was still choosing to believe in Satan's lie about God's kind of love for me, that I don't deserve to be loved by a holy God, that he didn't love me, unless I was choosing to obey him perfectly all of the time. But how wonderful is choosing to believe in the knowledge and in God's truth that despite my sin, and despite my failures, God does greatly and perfectly love me the same unconditionally all of the time. Not because I earned it, because I can never earn it obeying Him. God's kind of love is not earned by me. Not because I'm worthy of it, because I'm not but because love is in the very nature of God. God is unconditional love, and He seeks to choose to unconditionally love me. Any thought that I must wait till I try to obey God first to be able to experience His love for me is just a lie from Satan to believe in, in my mind, which God wants me to choose to resist trying to believe in. What we choose to believe in creates our emotions about what we are choosing to believe in. We choose our emotions by what we are choosing to believe in. We only have two choices to believe in, God's truth or Satan's lies, in our minds. If we choose to believe in God's truth in our minds, we will experience good healthy emotions in our minds. And if we choose to believe in Satan's lies, we will experience bad unhealthy emotions in our minds. We can only blame ourselves for not experiencing good healthy greatly loved by God at all times. Emotions in our minds each day. God wants us to repent to choose to change our minds from choosing to believe in Satan's lies about his love for us in our minds anymore, and to start to believe in his truth about his love for us in our minds now instead. God's love for us is always undeserved. It irks me tremendously when I hear Christian authors or speakers telling people that they're worthy of God's love. My friend, the truth is just the opposite. God's truth is that we never deserve His love. At first glance, such a statement may appear discouraging, but in truth, that should be the most freeing thing you've heard all day maybe all year, or perhaps in your entire life. I believe the Bible clearly teaches that God's love is undeserved. Consider Romans 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ loving died for us. Did you catch that phrase while we were still sinners? God epitomized his love for us while we were still his very enemies. Ephesians 2 verses 4 and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By God's love and His grace He has saved you, 
and not because of your works to earn it from him. We were dead in our sins and had done, can do, nothing to earn God's love, but God, who is rich in mercy, and because of his great unconditional love for us, he chose to save us as a free undeserved gift from him. If we want to believe that he did, and receive his free salvation from him. Read that again. God saved us because he loves us. He doesn't love us because we are saved by obeying him first. We need to stop trying to believe the lie that God's love for us is like sinful conditional human selfish love is like for us. The Bible teaches that God's kind of love is not selfish, and that it freely gives to the undeserving. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 5 God wants us to love others, like He loves us, with His spiritual power to do it. The fruit of the Holy Spirit in us is love. Galatians 5 verse 22 Jesus said, Love one another the way that I love you. John 13 verse 34 Jesus said, Love your enemies and do good to them. Luke 6 verse 35 We can't earn God's love because we already have it as his unearned gift for us to have from him. And we can't ever lose his love, because we don't deserve it in the first place. God saved us because he loves us. He doesn't love us because we are saved or sanctified by trying to save ourselves or sanctify ourselves first to try to earn his love for us by doing these things. We can't save ourselves or sanctify ourselves from our sins. We don't earn his love because we already have it, even if we are still unsaved by him sinners. And we can't lose his love for us because we don't deserve it in the first place. God always loves us the same, whether we are obeying him or sinning against him. God's love for us is never a conditional upon our behavior towards him, kind of sinful human kind of selfish type love for us. Romans 8 verses 38 and 39. This scripture passage reveals the magnitude of God's love for us. Paul said, For I am persuaded that neither death or life or angels, or demons, or powers, or things present, or things to come, or height, or depth, or any other created thing, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord for us. To be clear, I'm not saying God won't punish those who reject His Son. Because of God's holiness and justice, those who reject Christ are already condemned, John 3 verse 18. However, the idea that we can earn God's love is extremely dangerous and unfortunately extremely prevalent in most people's minds today. The quest to earn God's love is utterly futile and its only accomplishment is turning those who undertake it into self-righteous hypocrites or self-loathing failures, neither of which exemplify the Christ-like servant that God is calling us to be. God is trying to teach us how to love ourselves and others the way that he loves us. If Satan and our parents tried to teach us to believe in lies about God's kind of love for us while growing up, then as adults we need to seek God to teach us His truth about it now, and choose to believe in His truth about it now instead.
We won't be able to experience the good, healthy kinds of emotions like love, joy, and peace, which God wants us to experience until we choose to start to believe in His truth about His kind of love for us. Earning God's favor shouldn't be our goal as Christians. Instead, we ought to be seeking ever-increasing conformation to the image of loving Jesus Christ. And we are made into the image of God's loving Son Jesus Christ by God's power because of His love for us. We can find God's peace and His rest in His loving arms. Why do so many people struggle to accept God's unmerited love for them? I believe it partly has to do with the fact that we live in a broken, selfish, unloving world that so very rarely sees God's kind of love expressed or taught in it. A world which wants to choose to believe in Satan's lies about God's love for us rather than in God's truth about his love for us today. Our world has come to accept conditional, inconsistent human selfish love as normal, and it truly breaks my heart. Consider marriage and its now almost inseparable companion, divorce. People cheer when a couple says they've been married for more than 10 years, because such commitment has become a rare occurrence today. Marriage was designed to be an earthly representation of Christ's unfailing love for his bride, the church. Ephesians 5 verses 22 and 33. But our world has turned it into a twisted mockery of the unconditional, faithful love God intended for it to experience, at the beginning of it from Adam. We are now left with such a distorted view of love that we cannot fathom God's love that sees our sinfulness, our failures, our filthiness, and says, Come to me anyway. In his first epistle, John records the sacred truth that God is love. In his gospel, John demonstrates that Jesus is the same image that God his Father is. This makes Jesus' love the same type that God his Father's love is like for us. When Jesus said, Come to me, love was beckoning with open arms like a unconditionally loving prodigal son's father, opening his loving arms for his undeserving of its son, like the unconditionally loving prodigal son's father, showering loving blessings on his undeserving son. So does Jesus want to shower loving blessings on undeserving of them us today, if we want to receive them from him today? We can rest assured and trust in what the Bible is trying to teach us about the truth about God's love, kind of love for us, that it is faithful, committed, unchanging, and wholly unconditionally, and undeserved by us, if we want to choose to believe in God's truth that it is. We need to believe that perfect loving God is trying to say to us, in our minds, truth-filled things like, Come to me and let me love you in a great and perfect and unconditional way today. Come to me, I am not reaching for a whip to try to punish you for your sins against me. I am trying to point to my son Jesus Christ's cross for you to believe that he has already been punished by me for all of your sins against me instead. I don't need to punish you for any of your sins because I punished my own son Jesus for them all 
Out of my love for you, instead, come to me and let my son Jesus take the punishment for all of your sins for you today. Come to me and let me cover you with my free gift for you, of my son Jesus' own perfect righteousness for you, so that I can see you as perfectly righteous as he is in my sight now. Come to me and experience my fullness of joy and my perfect peace of mind emotions for you, all day, because of your faith in my great free gifts for you today. I want to freely and lovingly give you everything that you need to be able to live a safe and abundant life here on this earth now, if you want me to. I want to take you to my perfect, loving world for you to live in after you die, to live there forever, as my free loving gift for you, if you want me to. If you choose to believe in my truth about my free, great, perfect love for you, then you will start to experience it emotionally. This is my truth that I am trying to teach you about my perfect, unconditional love for you, if you want to learn about it from me. Your perfect, unconditionally loving Father, God.